Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today we will discuss household poisons and antidote. Household poisons is poisons which are present in our home. The first one we will discuss is phenol. For each poison we will discuss we much know how it works and if this poison has antidote. Okay? So the first one is phenol. Let's start. How phenol work? Phenol has two mechanism of action. The first one, local action, then systemic action. Of course, phenol is disinfectant and it is corrosive. It acts locally by coagulation of protein. This property give phenol a transient local anesthetic effect which give us a chance to do less gastric lavage by olive oil in case of phenol toxicity. Additionally, phenol acts systemic by affection of three organs, CNS, kidney, and heart. For CNS first, it causes stimulation, then depression. In kidney, it causes a glomerular nephritis, then may reach to renal failure and ure uremia. In heart, it causes myocardial depression. Of course, phenol has no specific antidote. Okay, this is the first poison. The second one, this is oxalic acid. Oxalic acid is, looks like sugar. So it may be accidentally ingested by children. Oxalic acid, regarding the mechanism of action of oxalic acid, it acts local and systemic. Local effect is weak corrosive action, either on the skin or the stomach. While the systemic action of oxalic acid is very important, it binds to the ionized calcium and, conver and, con uh, and form a complex called calcium oxalate. So it converts the ionized calcium to non-ionized form that can't be utilized by the organ. So it leads to hypocalcemia, which affects many organs like CNS, kidney, and heart. Okay, so the specific antidote in case of oxalic acid toxicity, which is manifested by hypocalcemia, is calcium by every root. We try to give the patient calcium orally or intravenous, uh, intravenous if the case is severe. Okay, the third poison is caustic potash. Caustic potash is acting by liquefactive necrosis. This liquefactive necrosis causes severe tissue injury because caustic potash is alkali. Okay, the tissue injury may be transmural effect and may cause also perforation of the organ and may be cause protein and fat saponification and deep tissue destruction. Even it can cause thrombosis of blood vessels. Okay, unfortunately also caustic potash has no antidote. Like what? Like phenol. The next a poison is naphthalene or called moth pools. This protect closes from moss and from destruction. Naphthalene usually non toxic except in patients with with fafism or G sex B D deficiency. How how is naphthalene act in this patient? It is an oxidative agent. It acts by denaturation of hemoglobin, then precipitates the hemoglobin inside the RBCs, 
which leads to hemolysis of this RBCs and may reach to hemolytic crisis in case of feathers. Okay, but this not happen with every baby. Uh, also, naphthalene has no specific antidote. So, in case of naphthalene toxicity, we we must take a clear history about anemia or fetism uh, from patient. Okay, the last poison we can find it in, uh, we can find it in uh, home is carbamate, which is a rodenticide. Carbamate, carbamate acting like organophosphorus with several differences. Okay, uh, it inhibits cholinesterase enzyme just like organophosphorus. But this inhibition is reversible in case of carbamate toxicity. Okay, uh, reversible within about one or two days. Okay, additionally, carbamate has no CNS effect. It can't pass blood brain barrier. Okay, so we, because it's a reversible effect, we must not give the patient of carbamate toxicity uh, uh, oxymes, okay? We will just give him atropine for muscarinic manifestation. So we we take we take in this section uh, nephthalene, caustic potash, oxalic acid carbamate and phenol. Okay, let's discuss now the antidotes. What is antidote? Antidote are substances which counteract the effect of poison. With one condition, what is it? Without causing damage to the body. Okay, we will take several antidotes. The first one is Defroxamine. We was to know the first antidote is defroxamine. Defroxamine target in iron toxicity. Okay, it acts by it combined to iron and forming defroxamine iron complex. This complex is secreted through the kidney. Okay, and they give the urine a specific color, orange color. Okay, uh, we give defroxamine. Defroxamine not in all cases of iron toxicity, only in serious toxicity with a specific level of iron uh, toxicity and certain criteria. Okay, the dose is. 10 to 15 milligram, milligram per kilo per hour up to 6 gram. Okay, the route of administration is IV for defroxamine or desferol. The second antidote is naloxone, our magic. Naloxone target opiate or opioid. Okay, in case of opioid or opiate toxicity, it has a dramatic response. Okay, the opiate like heroin, okay, bind to specific receptor in brain. Okay, it's called mu, kappa, and delta. Then aloxone, okay, acts by competition with opiates. On the, those on these uh, receptors, okay, and this place are opiates, so it take the place of opiate. We can give it intravenous, okay, uh, by dose of 0.4 to 2 milligram, repeated every two minutes, up to 20 milligram. 
okay this means that we can give the patient about 50 ampoule of naloxone of course with caution to avoid appearance of withdrawal of opiates in addicted patient in addict patient okay the next antidote is flumazenil flumazenil or anexate it target what it target benzodiazepine toxicity it act by competition with benzodiazepine at benzodiazepine receptors in prey okay the same idea of naloxone the dose is 0.2 milligram repeated every two minutes after two milligram also it gives uh, we give flumazenil or intravenous okay this uh, the next antidote is in acetyl cysteine in acetyl cysteine is commonly used as mucolytic okay beside uh, its antidote action okay in acetyl cysteine target acetaminophen overdose okay how it acts in acetaminophen toxicity we have a intermediate toxic toxic metabolite to liver called napki okay this napki accumulate after exhaustion of liver and after finishing the store of glutathione in liver okay when napki is accumulate this cause liver damage how in a style act it act either by two ways firstly it it bind directly to the napki what which is the toxic metabolite and to convert it to non-toxic substance okay the second mechanism of action is enhance the synthesis of glutathione and sulfate which help liver to convert convert to a uh, to convert acetaminophen to non-toxic substance okay so in acetylcysteine act directly by convert toxic uh, metabolites to, uh, to non-toxic or by enhanced synthesis of glutathione okay okay what the dose of n acetylcysteine firstly the form of n acetylcysteine is such a such a form uh, given orally okay okay we give first loading dose and half of this loading dose is repeated as maintenance dose we started the regimen of treatment by loading dose consists of 140 milligram per kilogram okay then we will repeat this loading dose every four hour okay but by half the dose for 17 doses so we will give loading dose then 17 maintenance dose repeated every two uh, every four hour okay among the three days okay of course the session may cause gastritis or nausea for a patient so we will can give with an acetyl anti emetic okay the next antidote is atropine atropine is the antidote for organophosphorus and the carbamate okay but oxymes just in organophosphorus not in carbamate because carbamate is a, a carbamate has a reversible effect okay that uh, this is a form of atropine atropine 
a target organophosphorus and carbamate toxins. Okay, the mechanism it antagonizes the muscarinic and CNS effect of organophosphorus. The muscarinic effect uh, includes one what includes uh, dumbbells D for diarrhea, U urination, M meiosis, B bronchial secretion, L lacrimation, and emesis. The antidote of all these muscarinic manifestation is atropine. Okay, we give it intravenous by dose one to two milligram each five minutes till what the end point. This is important. We give atropine till dryness of bronchial secretion, not to a dilatation of pupil or another uh, effect. Okay, the next uh, antidote is oxymes or called toxogonine. Oxymes is called also choline stress activators. Okay, it target organophosphorus toxicity. Okay, how it act? It act by reverse the phosphorylation that caused by organophosphorus to choline stress enzyme. We know that organophosphorus bind to choline stress and do phosphorylation to it, which make uh, choline stress inactive. The oxygen reverse this process. Okay. The second mechanism, it detoxify the organophosphorus molecule itself and make it non-toxic. Okay, That's the third mechanism, it has an anticholinergic effect. So it has a tropine-like action. So it help in improvement also in of case. The dose of toxicogenin is 250 milligram for adult. Also, we can uh, give the patient maintenance dose slowly. Okay, it give uh, we give uh, uh, oxymes uh, by intravenous route. The last antidote is sodium bicarb or sodium bicarbonate. Sodium bicarb is used in several toxins like aluminium phosphide, methanol, and other toxins because uh, they cause metabolic acidosis. We know that in metabolic acidosis, we have a deficiency in sodium bicarb. So we give the patient an external uh, sodium bicarb by IV route. Okay to correct this acidosis. Uh, we also uh, give sodium bicarb in case of rhabdomyolysis, okay, which may lead this rhabdomyolysis to renal failure, okay, and sodium bicarb improve the condition. Also, we can give in case of antipsychotics drugs, this antipsychotic drugs cause wide or other toxins also cause wide QRS complex. Okay, if we found in EBG, uh, in ECG, wide QRS complex, we can correct it by sodium bicarb. The dose of sodium bicarb is very important. It is one to two milli equivalent per kilo. Okay, we also give it intravenous uh, with saline because sodium bicarb is very irritant to vein. So we must give it uh, in addition to saline or glucose uh, for patient. Okay, so we take desferol or defruxamine. Naloxone in case of opiates, N acetyl in case of acetaminophen, atropine in case of organophosphorus and carbamate, toxogenin in case of organophosphate, 
and finally we took a sodium bicarb in multiple cases that cause metabolic acidosis and finally thank you for listening